Hello there, this is Ben Simpson from Vine Manchester here once again. Uh, long time no see, it's been a, a few several months uh, since we were last in Printworks, but alas, here we are again. Uh, and we're about to discuss um, the long anticipated, if you are a Jackass fan, uh, Jackass Forever. Um, me and Andy are around the same age, so if you are around kind of the early, mid to late 20 year old millennials, you probably grew up uh, watching Jackass, at least you and I did. Uh, like, I don't know what age you started like, watching it. Uh, 12 maybe? Yeah, 12. It's usually like 10 to 13 is yeah. where for some reason a friend introduces to it or you hear about it, then you finally see it and then you replicate all the stunts. Um, but I thought yeah. for sure the third edition which came out, do you want to guess when Jackass 3 came out? Mm. Well, I guess it's going to be a long time ago. 2012 maybe? 2011. Wow, it's close. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's a long time ago, 10, 11, uh, 11 years, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And wow. I thought they were old then, like, because I think they were hitting their early 40s now. Uh, no, back then they were hitting their early 40s, and now they're, no, they're in the early 50s, 50s, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's mental. Uh, but I think they wow. do a good job at recruiting, like, these new youngsters uh, into the group, because you can tell that they're up for stuff, but then some, like, really physical stuff that the younger people yeah. do. Uh, like that new guy, Poopy. Poopy is, is clearly the, the new... He's the standout. He, yeah, probably. absolutely. I mean, the fact, dude, I that's harsh, I don't know his name, but he's the fact, he's the new president, Lacey. Yeah, yeah. He's no, right. no, it's not. Poopy's, I no, thought... No, 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 the fact, dude, the fact guy is. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he's all right, he just laughs a lot and does stuff. He's very much president, Lacey. he's not that funny. Yeah. He is, he's funny, but he's not a big character, is he? He's just there to do fat guy stunts, and that's yeah. fine. And, um... You know, a couple of the guys, but yeah, Poopies is clearly the, the new Steve-O or whatever. He's the new main cast member, I think. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, and you go into these films, and honestly, they're somewhat hard to review because you can't really concentrate on plot, cinematography, characters. They kind of live and die on the strength, of, the strength of the stunts and how funny they are. And I've never watched a Jackass film in the cinema. No. I think I was just too young to watch um, I didn't even Jackass know they've, yeah, I've never even thought about one coming out. It always seems like a home video experience, doesn't it? Yeah, no doubt. But watching it like in the cinema with an audience, like from begin to end, yeah, it's unrelentingly Raucous funny. Laughter. You kind of get the, uh, the thing that they, they're so infectious in what they do, where it's the, it's the, the stunt and then the camera turn to 15 people absolutely pissing themselves yeah. is the infectious thing that you want. And you kind of get that because you've got another 50, 60 people around you yeah, all doing true. the same thing. You're kind of like, you're part of that extra bit of 15 people watching fucking press and lace you get shit on or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I mean growing up, like, because I watched Jackass by myself, like, especially the TV show, but uh, every time there's been a new film out since when I first watched Jackass, so yeah, 10, 11 years old, there was like, I'd sleep over a bunch of friends, yeah. and the second one came out, same type of deal, and third came out, same type of deal, like, as I've gotten older, every time it's come out, I've watched it with people, and once again, you can watch Jackass by yourself, but when you're in, kind of like most great comedy films, like, you're laughing together, yeah, and you've got a, an out competing how much the next person can laugh, uh, it's just perfect kind of party atmosphere, and especially in a cinema, uh, it just probably elevated it, like, I'm probably going to rewatch it at some point, and it probably will hold up. But like watching, like especially some stunts for the first time, where you know at their age and over 20 years now they've been doing those stunts, they're still finding like creative, funny, sh you know, shit to do. Yeah. Where it's like, how come they haven't thought of this before? How can they just still? Because I'm, you know, it's easy going cynical to these films and go, okay, they're old now. What more can they do? Yeah. And no, it just kind of. Blue well, there's that, there's that, there's the stunts, but I think if you've got 10 years, 11 years, and enough teams of stupid people, you can probably come up with enough stunts. I think that's, that's definitely true. Mm. But the, the intangible thing they've, they've always had, which is that, just that sense of just ridiculousness, mm. somehow remains. I don't know how they did it. It, yeah. it really didn't feel like you were watching a bunch of old dudes. No. You know that shot in The Irishman where it's, <laughs> it looks Probably like, it, yeah, and he's trying, it's like, <laughs> oh. it's kind of like, you thought maybe Knoxville was gonna kind of run away like half-hearted and he sort of, oh, yeah. he looks old now. None of that, it felt just as fresh, just as funny. Yes, there's a lot of new young cast members, which is really good. That does really, that's a smart idea. When you see them at the start, you're like, oh, who are these guys? Yeah, but actually, yeah. they fucking, they fit in perfectly. They nail it. No, and they had a hard thing competing, because again, we've watched the same crew for, for decades now. Yeah. And I think the whole, not the whole appeal, but most of the appeal of Jackers is that you're hanging with a bunch of friends yeah. again you haven't seen in years. Yeah. So when you introduce kind of a new lot, you'll 
naturally kind of fold your arms at first, yeah. and kind of like, mm, who are these guys? But you very quickly kind of warm yeah. to them. And they did a really good job. But yeah, that intangible thing of like, it feels like if you're in a bunch of like banterous lads in England or whatever, that are just dicks. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they're doing kind of egging each other on and saying stupid shit and like making fart jokes and fucking making women jokes or whatever, yeah, it's just not funny. But they've got a wholesomeness about that where the banter is they're kind of pushing each other on and and it feels very laddy and very kind of blokey in yeah. that sense. But it's still so wholesome, still genuinely funny. Uh, but what I think is even more crazy is that that they did manage to keep that, but it still feels. Organic. Well, yeah, but if it, it feels that that kind of Spike Jones late nineties, early two thousand skater scene yeah. that is dead. Like that is a it's dead coming, it's coming back. scene. Like skateboarding is still around, and and you know that kind of like, you know, skinny hats and like whatever open shirts and shit. That's kind of coming back. But that is basically a dead scene. That kind of yeah, Bam Margera like kind of like trend, living yeah. on the road skateboarding. That skateboarding was one of the biggest things in the world in the mid two in the early two thousands. It's a dead scene and it still feels like they've got it. I don't know how they managed to bring that back. Maybe it's just because we don't live in America, we didn't know that it was still going on. But it felt very much like we just dropped straight back into 20 years ago. Yeah. That is pretty extraordinary. They've, they've absolutely nailed this. On that kind of topic, how kind of natural it feels and going back to my fourth point, how organic. Like, I don't know what the relationship between these guys are. Like They see each other like mm -hmm. often in between like films. I'm guessing they don't. Yeah. Um, but again, the appeal is that camaraderie with like the Jackass crew, and it's 11 years removed since the third one. And obviously a lot's gone on. Ryan Dunn passed away. Bam Margera went mental. Yeah. Um, but again, that organic kind of wholesomeness that makes it more than just kind of a gross out kind of, ooh, and ah. Oh, yeah. uh, that almost sweet center yeah, of yeah. the whole yeah, entire yeah. Jackass franchise is Absolutely. still there. Did you miss Bam? Do you think he was a I presence missed? I don't know, man. Like, I feel like when you, I think so. Okay. The shame is though, he's like a fat old dude now. Like, he's the one that's <laughs> aged and. Oh, definitely. Just matured the worst of all of them anyway. Like he's got a really just sort of tragic image yeah. anyway. I he's think such he, a loser. If his presence was there, like, yeah, he was probably the, like, the most, maybe the second or first most famous yeah. member of the Jackass crew, like in the OT. He was Dark Souls then, in, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he has his own spin off. Like, I think Steve O and Chris Pontius had a Steve O, but it wasn't as successful as um, no. what's his fucking Viva called? La Bam. Viva La Bam. Wow, that takes me back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if he showed up, like, he is, he looks kind of an, an alcoholic mess. He's fat. And kind of could he do he anything? Looks awful. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, he, I think he kind of epitomizes that era so much. Yeah. That it would have been nice to have him around True. if he was in his wholesome. I think if he'd. If he kind of got himself together and he was just like a, a how they are, where they're, they're still slim and in shape and still normal people, but yeah, you know, they're a bit older now. That would be great. It would be better to have him around. Yeah, true. But not. I don't think if he'd have he'd been himself currently and he was in it, it would have been worse. Mm. So no, not in his current form. I don't think I miss him. But it would have been good to have the old Bam in it. I think. Yeah. There's one that I thought was a bit questionable. The one with the way, where. He, where the new Zach, isn't it? The new fat dude. He yeah. he jumps on the big thing and and uh, old Knoxville goes through the ceiling. I'm not sure. I believe that they didn't know that was there because there's such a level of production now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like there's focus pullers and long lenses and cinema cameras going on. Yeah, it's not like shitty little kind of like hidden cameras, home it, cameras. It, 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 they're yeah. shooting this on big cinema cameras now. Mm. I don't believe that they didn't couldn't see those cameras or didn't know what yeah. was going on. And yeah. it's really staged. That one was a bit questionable. And what was interesting is that in the audience, those kind of like live joke, prank, practical joke segments got the least laughter. Definitely. And I think I know why. I think because it looks so professional because yeah. the cameras they shot, I don't think the audience knew that they were supposed to be kind of live pranks because it looked yeah. not almost like any other stunt. No. Like if it had like more shakiness, more handheldness or like a, yeah. a shittier camera, I think the audience would have clicked on, oh, it's just like a live prank yeah. like Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah. But because it looks so polished and obviously with like great cameras, great lenses, yeah. I don't think the audience, like especially um, the one where he falls off, hangs upside down with that woman. That was rubbish, wasn't it? But I think- It, it wasn't funny. And you don't believe it, do you? I didn't believe it because I'm cynical, but I think the audience didn't believe it because they didn't know what they were meant to be seeing. No. I don't think because it was shot so cleanly. Yeah. They're not clicking on it. Oh, she doesn't know what's going on yeah. here. Yeah. So they're just watching it going, is this just like a, 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 a bad scene in it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, with every single Jackass film, there's a few that don't yeah. hit, but the few that do, the two most memorable to me is one early on, uh, the Silence of the Lambs one, when they're in the dark, which is, 
It's so oh yes, it's yeah, so yeah. kind of somewhat vanilla, but it's just so sitcommy yeah, that yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah, they full on go for the mouse traps and the yeah, slippy yeah. stuff, and then walking into pans. Great. Yeah, really it's almost funny. kind of like classic sound stuff, film, yeah, just yeah. like in the dark, like oh, but classic. Yeah. It's just the interplay between them was just absolutely great, and obviously the big one with at the, the end with the bear, which the is, bear was next level. That, that's next level. That was I couldn't believe. Like I thought when he, you know, the reveal when he's on a chain, like oh, he's on a chain, he's only going to go halfway. Chainless. Literally, I just literally just up to it. Let a bear <laughs> eat salmon <laughs> off Aaron McGee's balls. Yeah. And like, you can see the guy, the bear handler, like, okay, we need to go in there now. Like, he obviously didn't have control of the bear. No. A bear can just literally go with Wham. food all over it. Yeah, honey like, and everything. Like, that was that was such a shock. I remember just when the thing revealed, and I thought. I heard a growl, I thought, is that a tiger? And he's like, yeah. no, it's a bear. It's almost worse in some way. Oh, yeah. Horrible. The vulture was really good. Um, yeah, the vulture was great. The vulture's just cool as fuck. I thought it looked me. Yeah, like, oh, like... I was very, very... I was like, wow, he's majestic. But <laughs> <laughs> through the Jackass franchise, they've used, like, every single, like, animal yeah. known to... Yeah. Like, there's only, especially, like, bulls and kind of, like, snapping turtles. Like, I've seen them loads. But, yeah, uh, yeah what, what was the bird? A vulture. A vulture, yeah. yeah I've yeah. never seen a it's vulture. Huge. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely huge. The, uh, I really like the one with the uh, with the Francis and Ganu and the and the, the ice hockey puck and the oh the pogo oh, stick the, the on pogo the ball. It was for Aaron McGee. Brutal. Aaron McGee really was good in this one. I feel like he's <laughs> obviously he's, the whipping boy of the, the group, but yeah, but he's he really the good. show. I think he's yeah. in the most memorable kind of like yeah. um, like impactful like pranks and stunts up the whole entire thing. And he's, he has been like the guy who's been bullied throughout yeah. this whole franchise. He's the least famous. I mean, George Rowe. Um, <laughs> George Rowe, if you want. George Rowe. He, um, George Rowe, if you want. You know him. Hi. Uh, he said to me once, name all the cast members. And I was like, yeah, easy. And then I, mean, and I, I literally yeah. didn't know who Aaron McGee was. When we were walking to here, I'm like, I need to mention that guy. What's his name? Yeah. <laughs> and we, how much of we've seen? His name's fucking Aaron McGee. Like, and he was, I know his name now. Like, that he was, he was excellent in this. And yeah. He just seemed like a really wholesome guy in it as well. Even comedy films, like, they don't hit as hard as that. It turns like German and laughs from beginning oh. to end. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think we both heavily recommend it. Obviously, it's not going to be for everyone because uh, not everyone, obviously, Jack is not their cup of tea. Uh, but you like it if you like it. Like if you've seen the show, seen the films, liked them, what are you doing not seeing this? And see it here at Brimworks. This is Ben Simpson signing off from Vibe.